We've been talking about Penn State all morning, and so it's only fitting that we have its new head coach on. Bill O'Brien, thanks so much for joining the Dan Patrick Show. How are you today? Hey, Bonnie. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing well. Thank you so much. When did you first find out about the sanctions bill? Did you know before the rest of us did? Uh, no, I, I found out about the sanctions at 9 a.m. with the press conference. Did you have any suspicion of how things would play out? Well, I knew at that time that, um, you know, going into that press conference that I knew that there was a chance that these would be, uh, you know, like I said in my statement, harsh penalties, but I didn't know exactly what they would be. I know you met with your players yesterday. What message did you share with them? Well, the first thing I told them was I talked about why I came to Penn State and why I brought this staff to Penn State. And and there's so many things that go into that. But number one was I thought that this was a place that could combine great academics with good, tough, hard-nosed football. And none of that's changed. And I talked to them about the discussions that I had with my family in coming to Penn State. And I talked to them about the fact that I felt like I could coach good, tough, hard-nosed kids that really cared about getting a great education. And none of that has changed. And I've been very proud of this football team to this point uh, over the last few days. And really over the last six months, Bonnie, they've been through a lot of stuff. And, and it really, in our, in our line of work, it's about the players. And I couldn't be associated with a better group of players. Probably not a lot of people would ask you this, but being a woman, I always think about family first. What have your discussions been like with your wife as all of this has been playing out? Because there were so many coaches who probably wouldn't have touched this thing with a 10-foot pole. And, and the risk you're taking, at least from afar, is pretty extraordinary. Well, I, I think at the first, the first time we spoke about Penn State back when the job was offered to me, you know, we're, we're both very well-educated people, Colleen and I, and, and, and we knew that uh, we have a very, very strong belief in the combination of academics and, and athletics because that's the way we were brought up in our respective families. And, uh, you know, we, we've been faced with challenges in our personal life up to this point, and, and we knew that that's really the most important thing, that anything that had to do with football and our football program and being a first-time head coach was was something that we could definitely take on, and, and no matter what the circumstances were, that, that uh, we were positive people, and, and, and we felt good about the people that were in charge here at Penn State that hired me, and none of that's changed. The question right now, Bill, is who's staying and who's going? There's already been a lot of media reports about USC pursuing Silas Red. I was wondering if you could shed any light on that, if the two of you have had a conversation. Well, again, uh, you know, when the NCAA handed down their sanctions yesterday, one of the things that they stated, as everybody knows, is that uh, that these kids could transfer without penalty and, and that, you know, other schools could contact these kids um, virtually by just emailing our compliance office and, and letting them know that they're going to contact them. I'm not going to get into any conversations that I have with individual players. I'm going to tell you that I've been very proud of these players over the last two or three days. Uh, I know that there's some some tough times that they've had to deal with over the last six, seven, eight months. Uh, you know, they're they're talking to their families right now. But again, what I've reiterated to these kids over and over again is why they're here. And they're here to get a fantastic education. That hasn't changed. They're here to play really, really good, tough football. That hasn't changed. We're on TV. We, we've got the chance to play six, seven bowl games per year in front of 108,000 people at home. I don't know how many bowl games have 108,000 people, but the last time I checked, there aren't any. And so I feel really good about where we are right now as a football team. I realize that things can change, but, but we're moving forward. We already have plans in place to how we're going to deal with different things, and, and uh, we, feel, we feel very positive about the direction of where we are right now. I know you, you probably don't want to talk about players in question, but have you had any conversations with players, either current or incoming recruits, who, who have already said, I'm here to stay, we're good to go, Coach? No question. Uh, I've, I, I feel uh, that we have some, some younger players, some, some players that are in the middle of their careers, and, and certainly older players, the leaders of our football team. That Did have you been shed some there. light on, on specifically who we're talking about here? No, I'm not going to get into, again, I'm not going to get into – uh, individual conversations that I've had, but I can tell you that I've had many, many positive conversations about kids that believe in our staff, 
uh, our ability to develop these kids as players and as people, our ability to develop them for the next level, our ability to make sure that they go to class and, and receive this great education here. And I've, I've received a, a great number of positive feedback from our players. Penn State head football coach Bill O'Brien on the Dan Patrick Show. Getting back to the sanctions for a minute, Bill, as you've started to digest them, among them all, which is the hardest pill to swallow? Uh, again, uh, I would tell you that, um, in my opinion, the, the the one that was the hardest is the fact that these that these kids could transfer without penalty. But at the end of the day, that just means that we have to reiterate to our players over and over again, which we're doing, why we came here, what this place is all about moving forward with me as the head football coach. Uh, I can't pick out one sanction, you know, versus another that's just, you know, that much harder. But I tell you that right now my my main goal is to keep this 2012 football team together, and that's what I'm working very hard to do every single day. Who have you sought advice from? The, the, the first person to come to mind for me would be Lane Kiffin because they just finished up with their sanctions. But But who have you reached out to for advice? Yeah, it's hard to seek advice from from other coaches right now in college because you know a lot of those guys are are uh, obviously interested in our players. So uh, it's hard to do that. You know, I've always seek uh, seek advice from from my wife. I've always seek advice from from uh, from my father, uh, and I've seek advice from people like Bill Belichick, uh, George O'Leary, uh, guys that that uh, that I really have looked up to in 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 in. Uh, in my time in, in, in coaching. And so, uh, you, you know, I've seeked advice from people that I've coached in the past and everybody that I've spoken to believes in, in the fact that I'm here, believes in what we're going to try to do here and, and, uh, has been very positive with me. I can't tell you, Bonnie, I've probably received over 150 emails, text messages that have been extremely positive about us being here and where we're headed. What do you think is the most sage piece of wisdom from all of those emails, phone calls you've received that you've really latched onto? The best piece of advice is you can't dwell on the past. You've got to move forward, and you've got to play under the rules of which you, you, you've you know been sanctioned under right now. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're not dwelling on the past. We've had two great staff meetings over the last two days. Uh, we've already uh, put plans in place of how we're going to play under these rules. And we're going to play under these rules, and we're going to field a competitive team. And I hope uh, that many of our fans are listening to this interview because I expect our fans to understand that we're moving forward and we're not settling for anything but to, be, to try to be the best football program that we can be. And, and at the end of the day, we're competitive people. We've got competitive players here. And, and we believe, again, in the mission of Penn State, in my opinion, which, again, is a great combination of athletics and, 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 and academics. Are all of your coaches sticking around? There's no question about that. We, we a lot of the coaches here that I've coached with before, uh, you know, we're in it together. We we've, we've all been in tough situations before. Uh, there's no other group of men that I'd rather be in a foxhole with, and that's that's what we're doing right now. We've got a great staff. We've got a fantastic staff of teachers, uh, of recruiters, of uh, of fathers. Uh, great husbands. We got a great mix of experience on the staff, pro experience, college experience, and. Uh, uh, I really enjoy coming to work every day with these guys. That is interesting. You you kept two coaches from the previous regime, Ron Vanderlyn and Larry Johnson, both defensive coaches. Why did you decide to do that? Well, again, these were two guys that uh, after talking with um, – the new leaders here at Penn State, Rod Erickson and Dave Joyner, and then also talking to uh, some of our players here at Penn State, that these were two guys that were held in high regard on this football staff, and these were two guys that uh, were excellent teachers, had a proven track record of recruiting, and uh, and I'm proud to have them on my staff. Let's play role-playing for a second with Bill O'Brien, Penn State head coach. I'm a recruit. I'm coming with my parents out to your night game at home against Ohio State at the uh, end of October. What's your sales pitch to me? Sales pitch. I'm a really you know, good quarterback, just so you know. I'm I'm like a blue chip. Maybe not a quarterback, but I'm I'm right. definitely a blue chipper. Right. Again, you know, where 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 do I begin? Number one, I would tell you that we 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 have a fantastic education here, Bonnie. We we offer over 150 different majors here at Penn State. We have so many different things to choose from. We've got 45,000 undergraduate students here. 
Uh, they sold out the 25,000 seat section of our of our stadium very very quickly, uh, a, a student section of our stadium very quickly, and and this is a a place where you can come and achieve all of your goals. Meaning you can come here, you can receive a great education, and you can play fantastic football. Now, what I'll say to them at, from a football standpoint is. Again, you're not going to go to a bowl game. You're not going to be eligible for a Big Ten championship. We understand that. Let's think forward, okay? This staff will develop you to be able to play at the next level. We know what it takes to play at the next level. This staff will make sure that you understand the meaning and the value of this education here. This staff will will make you and, and show you, if it's the Ohio State game, what these fans are all about which is 108,000 people strong that will be coming in here this season ready to support their football team. And, again, we'll come up with different ways to think about championships during the season here. You know, uh, we'll come up with different bowl games scenarios within our regular season here. But, again, at the end of the day, it's about being able to be developed the best you can as a football player and being able to come here and get uh, a world-renowned education. How valuable of a carrot, Bill, is it for you to dangle that you just came from being the offensive coordinator for one of the most prolific systems in the NFL and the Patriots? Well, I think it's very valuable because of my relationships with the guys that I coached for there, coached with there, and the guys that I coached. Uh, I would never put words in anybody's mouths, but I can tell you that uh, uh, I learned a lot from Bill Belichick. Uh, they're, they're, the five years that I spent there were invaluable. He taught me a lot about putting a team together. He taught me a lot about a, 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 you know how to strategize. He taught me a lot about evaluation of talent. I was able to coach with a great staff there, and, and Dante Scarnecchia and Ivan Fears and Chad O'Shea and George Gotze and Josh McDaniels. I mean, I, I worked with some of the best coaches in the National Football League at the Patriots. And then, at the, you know, obviously I, I was able to, to work with guys like Tom Brady and Wes Welker and Gronkowski and Hernandez. And, you know, those were highly talented guys that, that were competitive guys. And so there's no question that, uh, you know, I learned a lot there. Uh, we have great relationships with those guys. I do personally. My family does. And, and, uh, and, and I'll bring a lot of what I learned from the Patriots, obviously, to Penn State. Penn State head coach Bill O'Brien, agree or disagree with the Joe Paterno statue coming down and why? Well, again, you, you know, Bonnie, my, my job's my job's pretty simple. You know, I'm here to really talk to you about the football program. And, and I have three jobs. I have to educate young men. Uh, on the football field and off the football field. I have to develop young men of character, and I've got to win football games. Now, what I'll say about about the decisions that have been made over the past six or seven months is I support Rod Erickson, our president. I support Dave Joyner, our athletic director. They've had to make tough decisions, and these are good men. These are good leaders, and that's that's what I'll say about that. You have a five-year contract. Give me a percentage of likelihood that you will be here in State College when that five years are up? Well, again, you know, I'll tell you what I told my team yesterday, uh, and again, I said it to them again this morning, I'm committed to this football team, and, uh, and, and I'll tell you this, I, I feel very proud to be associated with this university. I'm proud to be leading this football team, and, and I'm proud to be coaching these young men. These guys are, are fantastic kids that have been through a lot, that are working extremely hard, and I'm, I'm committed to this football program. You know that's not a percentage, don't you? What's that? You know that's not a percentage, don't you? I'm not a mathematician. I don't even, I can't even get into percentages. You know what? I might buy that if it weren't for the fact that you went to Brown, but I'll let you off the hook because you were nice <laughs> enough to come on. Bill O'Brien, Penn State head coach, thank you so much, and good luck with everything, Bill. Thank, thanks, Bonnie. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Have a good one. Bill O'Brien, Penn State head coach.